Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with a fun and easy table runner project. This is called Zigzag Stars. This is a complimentary pattern from Wilmington Prince. This is their fabric collection, Liberty Lane. You've seen all kinds of projects come rolling through, trip around the world quilts, uh, hot pads, wall hangs. I couldn't resist making this really fun table runner. And if you're a beginner, you are set to make your first table runner super easy. This kit, limited quantities, includes pre-cut five inch squares. I love that. You can really just dive in. But hey, if you've got a stash of fabric at home, be sure to download the pattern. You can make that at home with your own fabrics as well. Really fun, quick project. We'll be making the same block, but we just rotated that a little bit so it makes it look a little more scrappier than it actually is. So in our download of Zigzag Stars, it's a single page download, you'll have basically have the colored fabrics and then you'll have your white. Of course, that's gonna offset your red and blue fabrics. So uh, this is, uh, again, five inch squares cut. So our first instruction is to go ahead and make kind of two groups of fabric. The first is to reserve 16 of our five inch squares, and those will be for the points of our, um, of our half square triangles. And then we're going to put 16 more of those aside, and that's what's the center of these blocks. That's right in here. Those centers will be cut down to four and a half inches. Five, so five inch squares, uh, we'll just take our four and a half inch creative grid ruler, and you know, you can really stack all four of those fabrics up at the same time. Let's back, let's just do that. Let's just grab those four fabrics that are that we see in the center, the stripe, we have our uh, fireworks, and we have our stars and then our American flag. Now, because I wanna make sure that my stripes are running really nice and clean and parallel, and I'm not diverging, I'm gonna put that fabric actually on the top so I can see that. No, no other fabric here on the stack is directional. So that's just a little bit of strategy. I love being able to cut multiple things at the same time, saving me time uh, so that I have more time to do other projects. So this is where I love to have my spinning mat because I don't have to pick up my stack and move it. So we'll take our creator grid four and a half inch ruler and I'm just gonna be running that right along the side of that stripe We'll give a cut, and this is where I love to not have to ever really move my fabric. I just move my orientation with my spinning mat, and I find so much increased accuracy, because before I had a spinning mat, I would pick up the fabrics and turn, and they would uh, they'd move ever so slightly. So you'll go ahead and trim all of your centers. You can make each of these, by the way, especially if you're getting the kit, Whatever you want, you know, we, we just kind of did, um, we actually did two different looks, if you see this right here in the overhead, right here, and then we did those two blocks the same, but you could do four completely different blocks, whatever you want to do with that. So you'll, you'll have those cut to four and a half, and you'll do the same with these fabric beads out in the corner, where we will also trim down our white squares, four of them per block to four and a half inches. So we'll put that aside. Now let's talk about those points. We're going to be uh, making something called a half square triangle. If you've been quilting for any time at all, you already know what that is, but maybe you are new. So what that means is we'll take a five inch square of our color, and I'll just do this one right up here with the red stars and the white background. And I love to use what's called the seam guide. I will draw from corner to corner, making sure that I can in that little slot, I'm seeing that corner and I'm seeing that corner and I'm just going to draw, Oop, I'm on the right side, let's flip that. I had to check that. You wanna draw on the wrong side of the fabric and sometimes with white on white prints, it's difficult to tell what's the right side and the wrong side, so be sure to check that. We'll just draw on either side of the line, just like that place our fabrics right sides together. And I like to pin in the area that I won't be sewing. That way I don't have to remove any pins when I sew on the line. So that's something I've just learned. That way I'm not stopping and removing pins or accidentally maybe sewing over a pin, which is never good. We're just sew directly on the line and I've done that ahead of time. So nothing uh, you know, terribly interesting about that, but just be sure to sew directly on the line. Once you have that, 
we can just use a straight edge. And I should have had a longer ruler with me. I don't have that, but that's all right. I'll just scoot along my line and cut that in half. So let's set that up there. And we will just press to the dark side consistently when we're making our half square triangles. And notice we now have two. That's why it made sense to make two of the blocks identical because I'm getting two of every single one of these as I make my half square triangles. So let's press that again to the dark. Now we will once again grab for our four and a half inch creative grid. Notice this line here. What I love about that line, I could certainly put that like this, but I want to use that to my advantage. That line is so I can sit this right along my uh, seam right there. And notice how I have just a little bit around this entire square that I get to square up. I love that. It makes it so precise. So when I'm marrying that up with these blocks, they just lock together like a puzzle. So use the creative grid tool for what it's intended for, that nice diagonal. Notice again, I'm not having to pick up my fabric at all. I'm simply rotating around the fabric so that I'm increasing my accuracy by not disturbing the fabric during this process. So that's how we just go ahead and square that up and we set that aside and we continue through that process. Now, once you have that, now we'll just use our uh, download to lay out our block. Let's grab that right now. We know we had our four and a half inch squares of our white on white, so we can just lay that out. You know, if you have a little design board that's portable, you can just take it from here to your sewing machine. That's wonderful. But we'll just lay this out here on the table laying out our four squares. I can't tell you the number of times I've sewn a block together wrong because I just assumed that I would remember the right orientation when I got to my sewing machine and I didn't. And I got to test out my seam ripper once again. <laughs> uh, I seem to do that on a fairly frequent basis, but I'm getting a little bit smarter now. Lay out the project first, get a good look at it, make sure it's right and then go. So we'll just keep laying those out you can see those techniques really speed up the process. We're literally making the block here together. Of course, you didn't need to see me make all these points again, but that is such a fast process and accurate with the ability to square up with a four and a half inch ruler and that nice diagonal um, that it really makes this truly a project that is, oh gosh, maybe half a day project. Of course, you'll quilt that or send it out for quilting but it comes together very, very quickly. So our block is nice and laid out, and now we'll just begin to assemble. So you could uh, sew these blocks together. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. We know that we'll press out here because there's no seams out in here, but let's start with this point. We want these to come together very nicely, and it really needs to come together beautifully at this point. So while I'm going to place those right side together, I actually want to start sewing here. So I'm going to give that just a little bit of a turn over. And I'm going to orient that to my machine so I make sure I'm sewing down this side. Similarly, right side together, right side together. We'll chain, we'll chain piece this. I want, if you're a beginner, I want you to see this. I want you to see the um, kind of approach that I take to going from the table to the sewing machine. I've also learned how many times have I meant to sew this side, turned it on the way to the sewing machine and sewed the wrong side. So that's another reason that I'm very um, deliberate about once I place those right side together and I pin, let's use a little bit of a different pin. I place them in their orientation so that when I'm feeding them into the machine, they're going in properly. All right, let's start with that. We'll come, we'll get our machine, our, our iron warming up. I'm gonna make this block all the way through so if you're a beginner, you can see how approachable this actually is. Okay. 
Okay. So let's see how we are doing here. Pressing is always something to consider. So, you know, that's, I consider those types of things. Um, that's a really nice point right there. So you can see that pressing this to the left or right kind of it makes the block a little lopsided. So for that reason, I will go ahead and press the seam open to evenly distribute that. This does something else for me, and I want to point out what that does. It gives you a visual target. And what I'm talking about is actually right here. That point right there is a quarter inch seam allowance. So let's take our ruler. We have our nice dashed line. And when we lay that on there, hopefully you can see that from the overhead camera, that is a quarter inch seam. So when we sew our blocks together and our thread, our needle passes that point, you know your block's going to have a quarter inch seam allowance and the points will come together beautifully. This is part of that, um, how you, you get that really nice uh, precision points coming together that for many years eluded me. I, I didn't have the discipline and the good habits that I have learned now over the years of doing it wrong for quite some time in seam ripping, doing a lot of seam ripping, too much seam ripping. <laughs> so I've just learned these things, so hopefully you're finding them helpful. Now we know that this block is going to be right here and this has a seam pressed open. So let's follow suit. Let's go ahead and press that seam open as well so that when we're sewing that top row to the second row and the third and the fourth, everything is lining up very nicely. So that will be positioned here. Same, everything's gonna be pressing open at this point. Now that everything is laid out, once again, I will continue adding those pieces to the sides. This one here, this one here, this here. Now you've got an option. One thing we could do is sew those together now so that when we join this up, that, so there's all kinds of options to you. Really, in the end of the day, you just wanna sew all these squares together, and so there's the options. Some people find it a lot easier to marry up these points when you're only working with those two units. And so we can take that approach by, by all means and do that. Or you could sew each of these to that and then simply join those rows. I'm gonna go ahead and just join those up on the sides like that. I really like that approach. I will marry those up and make that a nice four patch. One thing I wanna point out for that, let me give you some pointers on this is I just lay them on top, I fold that back, right there, I kind of take that little peak, I kind of roll that up toward me. Now I'm gonna run a pin on this side, right along that seam, so that when I sew those together, I don't have to remove the pin. I'm not sewing over pins, nothing is moving on me. So that's some of the strategy, again, for very accurate piecing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sew these various units together, here to here, here to here. And when I come back, let's sew, let's lay those rows out one more time, and we will do our final assembly in our block, and we'll be all done. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I press that. I did go ahead and press these to the outside again. There's a lot of bulk right here. That seemed to make sense to me. Again, pressing is kind of sometimes a discretion thing. Sometimes it's very obvious and other times not so much. Press to the outside here, we've got the four patch. Those seams are pressed open. Now we talked about having that nice press seam so that when I do come along that side, I have something to shoot for, so to speak. So I'm gonna turn that toward me, kind of get that look, glance at it, line those up. We'll pin here and then pin on the, uh, both ends with the idea that when that needle passes through that position, we've done a good job of having our points be nice and, and sharp there. And while we're at it, let's just do the other side as well. Let me make sure I don't mess that up. <laughs> I've done that before. 
actually it's over on, excuse me, it's this side. So let's do that as well while we're there. Make our trip to the sewing machine efficient. Take your little peek. Line that up. Let's pin our seam right along that seam and both ends. Let's go sew those quarter inch seam allowances again, keeping an eye on that point to make sure our needle passes through. I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. There's our point. Notice the needle is right on the point. I'm on my quarter inch here. Okay. Pressing, we're going to take in consideration that the row above and below our center two rows is pressed to the outside. So with that in mind, we know we want to press toward the inside so we have some nice interlocking seams. So let's go warm up that seam. I find that sometimes, especially when I've got a lot of bulk at a seam, when I warm that up with the iron, the fabric is a little more compliant with what I'd like it to do, especially if the direction I'm pressing doesn't feel natural to the fabric. You can see it's kind of resisting that sometimes, but this is working out very nicely because that way, when we sew those together, you can see that we're going to have some nice interlocking seams. And let's go repeat the same on this side. This is a nice big 16 inch block. So one thing I'd like to, to recommend or maybe even offer as a possible idea is even if you were to make uh, five blocks, four for a table runner, even three for a table runner, still a good size. This is a really nice size for a pillow. This is a 16 inch block. So you could be using a 16 inch pillow form for that, which is, would be a really nice accent. So now we have our top row, our two center, uh, rows two and three are together, and now here. Now, just like we've done before, we are looking at those tender spots, and I wanna point out what those are. When I was first sewing, I would just pin left to right. I had no idea what I was doing, but now we say, all right, what point, what's important to us? It's important to us that that seam comes together, of course. So let's pin, pin there. We know we made these interlocking seams for a reason. That's very important to us as well. We, get a, we can kind of feel that lock in. We'll put a pin here. And same right there. I can feel that interlocking seam. I can visually look at that. So we'll pin here. And then just so we don't have anything move away as we start sewing, I will pin lastly in those two ends. And we'll repeat the same on the other side. So I'll go ahead and pin that. I'm going to sew that. We'll press it in the end. Our block will be done. Okay, we are very close to finishing this up. And you can see when we made our half square triangles, I'm just gonna press, you know, it seems to wanna press this direction. Let's go ahead and just press that. You saw when I was making the half square triangles, you're really making two at a time. So this project goes together very quickly. So you'll make a total of four blocks. And as you can see, we just sewed them together. Hey, you can even add sashing if you're doing this from home to grow the project even longer if you'd like. We just sewed the four 16 inch blocks together and quilted that and put a nice binding. The kit also includes a really nice backing in that as well. Of course, always limited quantities on our kits. I love doing projects with pre-cuts. I love being able to just jump in and get going. Um, and you can see, even though we had to square up a few of those for our four squares and in our corners to be four and a half, it's really quick with the Creative Grid Ruler and the spinning mat. And how fun to be able to make that maybe into an extra block for a pillow. I love that idea. So thanks for giving me part of your time today. I look forward to seeing you soon on another shabby video.